The Babyface's blaster has been in slight turbulence of nerfs and buffs since its inclusion in the Pyromania update as part of the Public Enemy set. With gaining boost for the damage being the core concept, it can get pretty hard to balance. But one of the most infamous nerfs came along with the Gunmetal update. Boost will now get lost upon taking damage. This has led the community to collectively and almost unanimously announce the Babyface as a bad weapon. How young. How naive. When it comes to scout primaries, you'll rarely if ever see most scouts switch from their usual scattergun. It's meaty, powerful, and fairly consistent, all things considered. Sure, I occasionally see a scout use the odd force of nature or the soda popper, but ultimately the scattergun will probably remain a mainstay in most scout mains arsenals. Scout does have the widest range of primaries that provide different tactics in my honest opinion though, uh, up close, huge knockback, many jumps, flank, mini crits, garbage, the works. In 2016, I covered a weapon that I felt was unfairly cast aside by the community at large as a traditionally bad weapon. Scout mains have a bad habit in my eyes of sort of ranking every single scout weapon under the same use case scenario as the stock scattergun. You know, is it good in close range and up close? But not every scattergun shines in that sort of gameplay style or scenario. That weapon is a weapon that came to be synonymous with an update from 2015 that signaled the fall of a titan. A weapon that used to be a pub powerhouse and mainstay. A weapon that made you a speedy menace and you were known to everybody on the opposing team as an all-encompassing threat who was everywhere and nowhere at the same time. That weapon was the Babyface's blaster. So, my name's Cody, and I'm here to ask an age-old question. I mean, I'm here to ask one simple question, and hopefully get one simple answer. How bad could it be? Do you like water? Most of us do. For all intents and purposes, it's needed to live. Uh, I actually have a bottle right here, and I'm fortunate enough to live in an area where I have access to it in multiple different ways, whether I want to buy it or get it from the tap. But a lot of people don't. Around 771 million people, according to Just a Drop. Just a Drop is a charitable organization that is looking to provide the infrastructure and access to clean water to as many countries as humanly possible. Since being founded in 1998, they've helped over 1.8 million people in 32 different countries. Me and a plethora of other TF2 competitive players and content creators are going to be helping join that fight with Drop of Delight. A Drop of Delight is a TF2 charity fundraiser that's being community-led. They're supporting Just a Drop in their fight for clean water in developing countries with a 12-hour charity stream on September 19th, 2021 from 12 p.m. to 12 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. They're giving away 9 unusuals and it's going to feature TF2 competitive players and content creators in a variety of events. You can also find the links on the website to enter the giveaways. We'll be participating in events ranging from TF2 Saxton Hail mod to pastime to dodgeball to MVM, which just so happens to be all of the modes that I'm going to be participating in. So you can find times for all of those and more in the description below, along with a link to the Twitch channel that they'll be streaming from. And if you need proof for their credibility, what about the official Team Fortress 2 blog? That's a start. You can find all of this information and more linked down below on their website with the times and the Twitch channels and the whatnot. So I hope to see you there on September 19th at noon. Thank you, and on to the rest of the video. The Pyromania update dropped on June 27th, 2012, and with it came three item sets, a new pyro weapon, the ever so infamous pyrovision goggles that kicked off a newbie goal for new players to dominate another player wearing the goggles. It also added Doomsday, which used to be a favorite map of mine until it got delegated to the alternative game mode section and I can't find games for it anymore. 
Among those sets came the Public Enemy set, which included the Babyface's Blaster, Pretty Boy's Pocket Pistol, the Dillinger's Duffel, and the Fed Fightin' Fedora. The set features a theme of 1930s bank robbers referencing Pretty Boy Floyd, Babyface Nelson, and John Dillinger. The Babyface's Blaster itself resembles a Browning Auto 5, which was used by Bonnie Parker of criminal duo Bonnie and Clyde while the Pretty Boy's Pocket Pistol is meant to resemble a 1908 vest pocket pistol used for covert killings by many criminals of the time. And all of that information came directly from the TF2 wiki, not my own research. Knowing is half the battle. And there have only been two or three big changes to the weapon since its addition in 2012. July 5th, 2012, Valve added recoil, reload, draw, and crit forces for the Babyface's blaster. Buzzwords that don't really mean anything. November 21st, 2013, during the Two Cities update, the Babyface's blaster was practically reworked, with the speed penalty being changed from minus 35% to minus 10%, boost is now only partially lost on air jumps instead of all jumps, reduced clip size from 6 to 4, removed 40% more accurate attribute, and removed the minus 30% damage penalty attribute. And finally, that leaves us with only the ever so infamous gunmetal update on July 2nd, 2015, which added boost reduction on taking damage and increased amount of boost lost on air jump. And that's it. That's all the changes the Babyface's blaster has ever faced, which is weird because it feels like a lot of scout mains who complain about it would have you believe that it's been spiked into the ground multiple times, but really, it doesn't feel like it's been. This leaves us with a current Babyface's Blaster with on hit builds boost, run speed increased with boost, minus 34% clip size, 10% slower move speed on wearer, boost reduced on air jumps, and boost reduced when hit. The stats still more than ever reflect a more flank play style to me, but there could be a pretty big issue with that sentiment, which I even held oh so long ago. The issue lies in the idea and the use of the weapon to execute that idea contradicting each other, but I am getting way too ahead of myself. At full boost, the scout will be running at the max possible speed of the game and will be unaffected by other speed boosts, such as the Conqueror or the Disciplinary Action. At full boost, this is 173% speed when running forward, 156% when running backwards, 58% when crouched, and 139% when swimming. The boost meter is filled when you've dealt 100 damage with any weapon at your disposal, which for a scout is like chump change, and when being attacked, each damage point taken will reduce the boost meter by 4%, so 25 damage will drain the meter completely, which is... not favorable? As scout, if you're skilled at dodging, you'll definitely deal way more damage than you'll take, but just 25 points could be dealt with one well-placed crossbow bolt, sniper shot, rocket, you name it. While Scout does deal a lot of damage, it's difficult to say that most people will deal more damage than they're taking to keep boost meter full at any given time. Scout does thrive off of a playstyle where he's not seen until it's too late, but then again I guess every class does. But Scout specifically runs faster than any other class and can much more easily navigate behind an enemy team, only rivaled by an explosive jumper or a spy. Scout's ability to double jump only makes that easier, but the Babyface's Blaster punishes the use of a double jump by taking away 75% of your boost if you dare to press that spacebar a second time. It used to be that the speed would definitely make up for that. Once you got a full boost, you could run circles around anyone you came across and you were a force to be reckoned with. But now, you can definitely be taken down a peg pretty easily. One shot from nearly anything is guaranteed to give you the video game equivalent of Whiplash. You go from 173% to 120 with a snap of a finger so effective at making you a walking corpse, Thanos could only wish he was as powerful. It's at that point that you have one of two options. Revert to normal scout instincts and begin jumping and negate the potential gain of any boost, or try to roleplay as a fat scout with a smaller clip shotgun. 
You do have one jump before you lose boost, but in this situation, you'll want that second jump to change direction. No matter what you choose, at the end of the day, you'll be one of two things. Dead or slow, and one is preferable to the other. But it's still frustrating when you go from sonic speeds to snails asleep, if you catch my drift. Thing is, I still stand by the babyface being in a camp where people ride it off too easily, and it does have its uses. But I've changed my thoughts on it being more of a flank scout weapon. It does have a niche that it can fill that's been a bit more popularized by my identical twin, Fish Stick on a Stick, who you can't prove isn't my twin because you've never seen his face. The Bleed Scout is a playstyle that's useful for long range combat, which complements the Babyface's downsides of taking damage, reducing the boost meter. Paired with the Rap Assassin or the Flying Guillotine, or hell, why not both, you'll be a scout that's constantly tossing cleavers and ornaments at your enemies for that sweet, sweet chip damage. Other variations include using the Sandman to slow enemies, into Cleaver, into Blaster, or the Criticola with the Rap Assassin to make for a speedy mini-crit menace. Whatever your preference, these setups can help lift the Babyface's Blaster up to have a more consistent full boost meter, and I can definitely say that it works. I may not have been the best judge in 2016, I was very new to writing and research, my voice was stunted and awkward, and just look at that footage quality. I gives me nightmares. I'd like to believe I'm reasonably experienced with the whole weapon analysis at this point. I still make a mistake or two that I don't catch, and I'm prone to getting lazy near the end of video editing. Overall though, my stance on the babyface, while changed, is still relatively the same. It's not the worst weapon in Scout's primary arsenal, and anyone who says it is probably hasn't tried using it in a manner suiting the weapon which I have found personally is the case with most traditionally bad considered weapons. Sometimes they are just as bad as other people say, and other times it's people just being babies. And no matter the case, I'm hoping to be doing this until I've done every weapon, at least. I don't know how long it'll take, but I'm sure it'll be a while before I've met my match. That, that's not, that's not what I- I've only played like one or two matches in the official Valve competitive mode and I wasn't a fan. Because they tried to take some of like the 6v6 format, but not enough of it. The thing that killed it most, I think, would be the long wait times. I think people would be more willing to give it a go if it had better wait times. And I reckon it's just a shame it didn't work out. On day one, I didn't think about the long wait times. It was still a fresh update and there was a lot to explore. But after one week, I really missed the old system. Meet Your Match to me was Valve trying to answer the call with the rise of Overwatch and esports, but they didn't want to acknowledge the community and instead decided they wanted to reinvent the wheel. 